And now we are recording. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A blonde and a redhead have a ranch. They just lost their bull and the women uh, needed to buy another one. They only had $500. The redhead tells the blonde, I will go to the market and see if I can find good one. Good morning. Good morning. And I will see if I can find one. What do you mean? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm going to mute everybody. Oh, that's Bill's <laughs> class. <laughs> okay. So the, uh, I mean, they only had $500 and the one's going uh, to find them to the market to see if they can get up there that a bull for that amount. If I can find one, I will send you a telegram, she says. She goes to the market and finds a $499 bull. Having only $1 left, she goes to the telegram office and finds out it will cost her a dollar a word. She is stumped. How will I tell my friend to bring the truck and trailer? Finally, she tells the telegraph operator to send a word, comfortable. Pay attention, comfortable. <laughs> Skeptical, the operator asks, how will she know to come with the trailer if you're just sending one word? The redhead replies, she's a blonde. She reads slowly, come for the bull. <laughs> Come for the bull. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last time. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least so a couple of you kind of chuckling. I don't know. <clears throat> Last time we talked about the external part of your iPad. We said how you can order it with uh, different amounts of money <laughs> and get different quality or different functions on your iPad. We talked about the memory in it. We talked about the buttons around it. You have the power button, the volume up and the volume down. On the phone, you also have the mute switch. Some of you may not have the home button because they made the screen larger and therefore eliminated the home button. And so every time you wanna use the home button, you have to sweep up. Now, if some of you have that and just got it and want a, um, I, have a I have a particular handout that I have that explains what the gestures are for the new device, the ones without the home button, when you wanna, when you used to press the home button to do things. So if you just, if you send me an email, I will send that out to you. We also talked about the icons and the little things on your device and how to move them around. They may remember how to move them around. How do you yes. do that? Make them nervous. Pardon me, go ahead. Make them nervous. Make them, <laughs> good. It's a good way to remember it. You make them shake by pressing anywhere on the screen when you're on a home page. Okay. And now I'm going to, I'm going to flip my, uh, my screen. Okay, everybody can see that one? Yes. See my, see my home screen? Yes. Okay. So if I put my, oh. So if I put my uh, finger right here on my screen and I just press and hold it, they start shaking, right? I can do the same thing on my iPad, iPhone. 
by putting my finger here, we'll put it there, and press and hold, and they shake. To get them to stop, you just click it, you just tap it, and they will stop. Okay, they're still shaking on the iPad, so I'll put my finger on that, and okay. To get from screen to screen, we did this. Now you put your finger on one side and back. Same thing on the iPhone. I'm not gonna switch the mouse, but okay. On the iPhone, there is one more screen there than the little dots show at the bottom. In other words, my home screen shows three, right? And that's the first one. That's the second and that's the third. And if you go one more, we talked about the app library. And the app library is where Apple puts all your apps in various categories for you. So for example, on the screen there, you have social. And if I tap the, the if I tap on the phone, it will be the phone. If I tap on the F, it will be Facebook. But if I tap the four additional ones there in the lower right-hand corner of social, it shows me all the apps that they have categorized as social, okay? <clears throat> then we talked about the keyboard, right? And I went to an app called Notes. Did, did we cover the, the uh, keyboard? Anybody say yes, no, or don't remember? <laughs> Somebody yeah. tell, yes, we did, okay. I went to the keyboard, right? And I just started typing there, get the cursor to show up on the keyboard. And I start typing. Okay, and, and now the note is automatically saved and whatever I add to it will automatically be there, okay? There are a couple other features there I may not have shown you. For example, if I wanted to add a picture, if I click the camera, I can either take a picture or go to my photo library, pick a picture, and then add it, okay? Then I could mark the picture up by hitting the pen and paper, the pen there, there at the top. Call from one, oh, hold call on, from maybe somebody three, trying to get in. Two, two, eight, two. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's sharing, okay, hold on. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> if you click the uh, magic marker down here, and then you can go and, well, wait a minute, should be able to draw on the screen. No, I've got to pick a color. Ooh, I'm not having success at that one. Oh, you have to draw in the uh, lower area of the screen. You see the little uh, arrow right here? You have to you have to draw below that. So I can't highlight the picture. And if I want to erase that, I would go there and then I could erase. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes, what is the point of all this? Oh, oh why would I create a note like this? Yes. 
Mm, I don't know. You oh, uh, one came up the other day. Somebody had their COVID card, and they wanted to. Um, they took a picture of their COVID card. Let me start a new note. Okay. They took a picture of their COVID card and they wanted to put it in their notes so they could go to their notes library and get the, and they didn't have to search through the photos to find that picture. So I just, I brought up a note here and I did COVID. Apparently I did mine for Costco, the O S T C O. And I had taken a, a couple of pictures, the front and back of my Costco card, and I wanted to include it in a note. So I tapped Costco. I have already taken the picture of the card. So I'll go to my photo library and I hope it's in here. <laughs> Mm, come on. I may have to take the picture here. And this is the problem you, you would have if you hadn't, um, you would have trouble finding the card. Let's assume it's these two pictures, this one and this one, okay? And I tap add, okay? So now I've added those two pictures to a note called Costco and I tap done. So now when I have to show somebody my COVID card, in my case, the, co the uh, Costco, I would tap that note and it would be there, okay? So that's one reason to use notes. Another one would be, now I'm not sure how, in what context Anne asked the note, asked the question. Anne, do you have a, can you elaborate on why I would have a note? Well, I don't know. You, I, I can understand now why you why you might want to do this, but it just seemed like it was not necessary. Okay, I have my medicines, my medical information. Right. In other words, the medicines I'm currently taking would be in here. Okay. So when I go to the doctor's office, I have the spelling correct. Uh, the allergies I have, I might have listed in here as a note. In fact, I think I have it. There's my allergies, right? Um, let me go to all my notes. A book list of books you, you've read that you don't wanna buy again. You might have that in there. Uh, my family, when I'm out in the West Coast, I say, I'm running over to Subway. What would you like? And they all give me their orders. Well, I put it in my phone as a note. And now I just say, is it the same thing you wanted before? And I have the complete list. Okay. Uh, and how would you... And when you're finished ordering, how would you erase that? Why would I want to erase it? Because <laughs> that the reason I put it in here is so the next time they don't have to tell me again. So I would keep it. But yes, you can erase a note, right? And by just putting your finger on the note and sliding it like so from the list of notes. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Bill, how about your passwords? Okay, you could create a note called passwords. Okay, and you could even lock that password note. So there's my passwords note. <laughs> All right. 
Now, I don't have anything in there, but you could have a complete list of your passwords. And then you could lock it. And um, let me save too much discussion about this till we get to notes. But there is where I could click the dots and then it says lock it. Now you have to set that up ahead of time in settings, but you could do that. All right. How about using it to scan a document? I noticed that as a choice when I hit camera. Uh-huh. So if you wanted to scan a document, you would tap that and then hold it above it and take a picture. Let me, let me get you a picture here. So if I want to take a picture, I would say scan a document camera comes on, I hold my device above the document. And what it does, it's different than taking a picture and get it right. get it correctly, you see what it did? It put a little bubbles or a frame around what it thinks is the document I wanna scan. And then I adjust that slightly. And I say, keep scan. And that's what ends up in my pictures. And Bill? Mm -hmm. Bill? Go ahead. What if there's more than one page to that document? How would you get the second page? You would have to do it again. Hit the camera again. Would then they be together? They'll be in the same note. Same note, okay. Okay. So basically the only difference between a photo and a scan is that you can crop, automatically crop a scan. Yes. In this case, and I don't want to give it. <laughs> yes, in this case, that's correct. Okay. What I wanted to do is spend, we did the keyboard thing. We talked about the keyboard in a, in a, when we did a note, and we talked about a couple features on the keyboard, like, let me go to this note, right? Mahauma. <laughs> if you have the keyboard on the screen and you press, let me get the mouse on there. If I press the space bar, you see how the letters all went away and I'm holding the space bar down. I can then move the cursor around my text and position the cursor exactly where I want it. By do, when you do the press and hold the space bar, it turns your space bar into what's called a trackpad. So you can actually move it around there. Okay. Bill, I don't, how did you get the, the uh, letters up on the screen? Sorry, the, what do you Which? call it? At the bottom, what do you, what do you call that? The, the keyboard, sorry. How did you get the keyboard on the screen? Okay, you have an external keyboard? Or you don't have a keyboard at all? I, right now, I don't have a keyboard at all on the okay. screen. Let's start a new note by tapping right, the pen and paper. And then you tap the screen. And then I got to get rid of the pen and paper there. You tap the screen. Let me start a new note again. And I don't want that guy. Wow, just a minute. All right.
My keyboard automatically comes up when I do a new note. I know. What I'm trying to do is get that to happen here. <laughs> Let me turn off notes app and bring it back again. Okay. When you start a new note, you should get the cursor blinking on there and the keyboard should automatically pop up. If you don't have that, you should be able to tap the screen and get the cursor to be there. And therefore the keyboard would come up. If I go to this note, move it down to um, <clears throat> the Costco note. If I tap the keyboard under the picture there, see the cursor appear? And when you do that, the keyboard should pop up unless you have an external keyboard. By the way, if you have an external keyboard, at the bottom right on, on notes and many of the apps you have that have the keyboard, there's a little picture that looks like a small keyboard. It's the one down here on the right. If you click that, it says, do you want the keyboard to show up basically? And I click the keyboard and then I get the screen keyboard. And that's the only way you can press the space bar and turn it into a trackpad. Okay. Well, Bill, yeah. why would you want to turn it into a trackpad? Say again. Why would you want to turn it into a trackpad? If I wanted to move it very precisely at a particular place on the screen. Here's the subway order for my wife, right? And if I, if she said, no, I don't want spinach anymore. So I would come up here and I would then backspace and get rid of the spinach. Now, you're right, Jim, you could touch the screen and get it up there. <clears throat> but you can also touch the, what Jim's saying is I could, I could click up here beside cheese and it changes the position of the mouse, of the, of the cursor, right? And you can move your finger around the screen the same way. But sometimes our finger gets in the way and it's a little too big or something. Okay. So yeah, Jim, it is redundant, but it does give you that capability. <clears throat> and we talked about the numbers on the iPad keyboards. In other words, I'm not on the number keyboard now, but if I got to the number keyboard, I would get there by clicking the one, two, three in the lower right-hand corner, left-hand corner. If I clicked the ABC, it takes me to the ABC keyboard. By the way, when you see something that you can tap or, or poke at, in the Apple world, when you tap something, it's what you're going to do, not what is there. For in the best example, a good example of that is down here in the left-hand corner where it says point question mark one, two, three. That means if I click that, I'll get the number keyboard. It doesn't mean I'm on the number keyboard. <clears throat> so it's a go-to button, if you will. Just like up here, I'm, the pen and paper is a go-to button for getting a new note. So I'm gonna click the go-to button and I have the one, two, three keyboard. Now it's ABC. I click the ABC button and it takes me to the, numer the ABC keyboard. And in the iPads, they have put little grayed out numbers on the Q through P, and then there are little grayed out symbols and things above the A through I and the Z through M. And we, we covered it last time. If you put your finger on the E and press and hold it down and then pull down, 
instead of typing an E, it will type a three. Okay. All right, any questions about that? Any questions you have about in general about notes right now? Yes, no? All right. I go back to the home screen. And I want to go to settings. So if everybody could go to their home screens on their iPhones and iPads and then go to settings. And what I want to go through is some of the major setting features. Okay. The first one is at the top of all our screens, it should have your name at the top. And if you click on your name, you'll get a bunch of stuff here. For example, if you have subscriptions with Apple and you tap the little arrow, it will tell you the subscriptions that you have. I think, yeah, there we go. Mine says cannot connect. Why would that be? Are you on the internet, Ann? I don't know, I'm on the iPad. And then if you're on the iPad, is there a little fan up there in the right hand corner? No, just an airplane. So you have to go down and turn off airplane mode over here on the left of your iPad. Okay. Now you should be okay. Yes, that did it. I have Good. a question about that first line that says name, phone numbers, and email. Uh huh. Is there any place, and I would think that's where it would be, but it isn't, that you can put your address in, your street address in? Otherwise, how would they know if you say to go home, how would they know where home is? The way you do that is you put your name in contacts. And then you okay. tell Siri, my name, my name is. So that Siri recognizes what your name, who you are. And if your name is in contacts, put your address, your email, your birthday, phone numbers, and things like that. Treat it as if it is a contact, not just a separate, not just you. Correct. It's one of the contacts. Thank and you. Then Leah, if I go to my contacts and I come down to my name, see my name there at the bottom? I have it a couple of times, but the first one there, it says me. And that's where I said, hey, Siri, my name is Bill Crow. And he said, do you want me to remember your name is Bill Crow? In other words, this iPad is Bill Crow's. Okay. There's another way to do that. We'll get to it when we get down to, to Siri in the settings. Okay. All right. We tapped our name at the top. And here, by the way, on here is where your Apple ID is. It's right there. On both your iPhone and the iPad. Okay. So mine has that it's uh, in cloud. That's the email that they're using is uh, rockpit2 at cloud.com. It's right. not what I've been using. 
change that's that the, or not? That's the Apple ID. Okay, gotcha. Okay. The major one that, well, if you look down here, it says what devices you have associated with that account in some way. Okay. And the top of the list should be your iPhone, an iPad. Well, on the list somewhere. Here's, here's my iPhone 12 and my iPad new Air 3. Okay. And I have an older iPhone and, an, oh, and my watch is down here. So Where are you long. under app, Apple ID? No, no, I'm, I clicked my picture on, the, on yeah. the settings menu and I just scrolled down. Okay. okay. Let me try that. Click my picture. Over here on the, on the settings menu, your name and picture. Yeah, mine doesn't have a picture, but- Correct, uh, that's okay. Mine, that, mine just says take photo. Correct. Now, hold on. If okay. you don't have a picture, you can click edit there. And then you can take a photo of yourself, selfie, and it would show up as a picture. Okay, someday. All right. <laughs> where, where do you see edit? Okay. Yeah. We're... Let, me, let me go back, make sure we're all at the same place. I'm in... I'm looking at my settings and I'm looking at the top banner in the settings menu on both the iPhone and the iPad. On the iPhone, I tap it. On the iPhone, on the iPad, I tap it. And it shows me information about whose iPad this is at the top. Mm -hmm. There's the word edit right under the picture or right at the top in that circle. It may just have your initials or initials or something like that in it. If you tap the word edit, it says choose a photo in your photo library or take a photo. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. I was about to cover subscriptions there. I have a bunch of subscriptions that I have gotten through Apple. And the reason, the reason I really like using Apple subscription service like this, right, is it keeps track of everything I've got. And it tells me I can cancel any one of them at any time very easily. If I wanted to cancel my Paramount subscription, I click here and say cancel subscription. And on May 22nd, it would be terminated. If not before, I'm not sure how that one would quite work. But you don't have a hassle in getting rid of subscriptions. You make it really easy to do. Okay. So my stars subscription will run out, right? I would need to resubscribe to it. Okay. The other major one there is iCloud. And it's both on my iPhone and my iPad. If I click that, I'm going to do it on both devices. It tells me the top line is how much of my iCloud am I using? If I'm near the top, I might want to update my subscription or my storage capability at the in the cloud now. And what it's telling me is my photos and backup and different things are being saved in the cloud from my device. I, I strongly recommend that everybody do this. So when you get a new one, you'll get all that information that you have on your old one on your new one. Okay. 
if I wanted to change my, in other words, suppose that I have, have far more storage than I need. Follow me? Suppose that I'm way down here and I have a, a 200 gigabyte plan and I'm only using 13 gigabytes. I can go to the arrow and manage my storage. And I can change my plan. Okay. And it says I could go to a 200 gigabyte plan. Or I think I could, no, I can't cancel it. Well, I may be able to cancel it. My plan altogether, but that takes me back to a five gigabyte plan, and I would lose my data. Okay. It also tells me how much each item is using here. And it says my photos is using seven gigabytes, backups is using. 4.9 gigabyte messages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's an MB. Megabytes. Um, that's that's one thousandth of a gigabyte. Less. Is one megabyte. So 500 megabytes would be half of a gigabyte. <laughs> You okay with that, Leah? MB, yeah, the MB is less than the GB. Right. So it goes thousand million billion is billion and gigabyte is gig is the same. Bill, what constitutes backups? Yeah. You you have all kinds of apps on your device, and those apps may have data saved in them. Oh. Okay, you may have be recording information with a recorder. And that would be in backups. So this is data associated with the different applications you have, other than messages, notes, et cetera. That you have a very small amount of backups, whereas I have an enormous amount of backups. Why is that? What's your enormous amount? 523.8 megabytes. That's, that's only megabyte. half a gigabyte. Yeah, megabytes. That's megabytes. So you have far, far less than I do. Okay. In other words, if this were one gigabyte, that would be 1,000 megabytes. Okay. What is a KB? Kilobytes. That's one thousandth of a megabyte. Less. Okay. Good. Good questions. Give those kinds of things when I was in high school. <laughs> that was last year, wasn't it, Leah? <laughs> More than that, but close. Just, but close. <laughs> if we have photos, now I, I went back, right? So it says iCloud at the top instead of iCloud storage which is what we were examining. I hit the back arrow and I go back to iCloud and it says apps using the iCloud, photos, and it's turned on. Now, if I click that, it comes over and gives me some controls about what I can do with my photos. I have chosen to optimize my photo storage on my device, okay? What that means is I have, I've taken a picture and that picture occupies normally about 1 million bytes. 
So each picture would take 1 million bytes. And I have, if I have 4,000 pictures, that's at least four gigabytes. If I choose to optimize them, it says, gee, Bill, you only want to save a thumbnail, a much reduced number of pixels for that picture on your device. So if I'm running out of space, this is the first place I would go. Once I do this and I, I go to my photos, and let me go to my photos just to give you an example. I'm in my photos right now, and this is called a thumbnail of the picture. It's a reduced size. If I, it was optimized and I click on it, I don't know if it'll happen here. I'm gonna click on that picture and if it's optimized, it shows grainy when it first comes up. And what your iPad does or iPhone is it goes to the iCloud, gets the full version of the picture and brings it down so it, it's not grainy any longer. Now that one didn't happen to take that long to do it. That's the alligator in my backyard. <laughs> okay. All right. So the is only the photo, is the photo stream still uh, something that you're using? I do, but you don't have to. Is the advantage that you can uh, see them on all your devices, or is that no, just no advantage at all? <laughs> okay. What he's talking about, where is that one? That one's right here. Upload photo. Upload your last 30 days pictures. What they used to do is that when they gave you that for free at Apple, up to a thousand pictures you could put up there in the last 30 days, kind of thing. Call from one eight zero two. All right. So upload my photo stream. Upload both burst burst photos. I choose not to do that. Shared albums. I do share albums with other folks, so I have that turned on. But the key one there to be sure you have turned on is iCloud photos. And just a word of warning, once you get them loaded up there, do not think you can remove them from your device and they will be preserved for you in the cloud. That's not the way iCloud works. If you delete a picture from your device, it synchronizes with the cloud and deletes it from the cloud as well. So it's not a way to ensure you have a backup for your pictures. There's other ways to do that. Then I, I turned on all the other items there. And you don't need to turn on the mail. Mail is, unless you have an iCloud account or a cloud account. If you have a um, Google account, your, your email is saved in the Google world, right? So and why do you have it on? Because I have an iCloud account, <laughs> email account, as one of my accounts. If okay. you just have a Gmail account, you would turn it off? I said I have an iCloud account. If you only have a Gmail account, you know, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't change anything. You can turn it on. It doesn't hurt anything to have it on. Now, it may not be able to be turned on if you don't even have, allow for an iCloud account. I mean, and go ahead and try to turn it on. Is it on? Yes, it's on on both my devices. That's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah, my, my philosophy here is error in the side of saving too much. And you'll notice I have everything turned on, including something called Keychain. Okay, I have Keychain turned on as well. 
And we'll talk about that in a minute and where, what keychain is. As for anything after that, well, I have all the apps turned on as well. Okay. But for sure, be sure you have backup turned on. And if I click on the backup there, iCloud backup in that list, it says I have it turned on and it will automatically back up my account information at night, basically when I have it powered on, when I have it locked and attached to a Wi Fi. Bill, did I lock? Excuse me, the, the problem they talked about yesterday was you must upgrade to the latest iPhone. Um, OS. 3.5.1. Um, go, I'll go there in a minute, but go ahead. Well, because there are so many bad things happening. Right. And, and I just wondered, how do you know? How do you know which one you have? I'll get to that when I get to general settings. Okay. Thank you. You're a little bit ahead of me, which is good. Okay. But just make sure you have backup turned on and you can force it to back up right here. But if you have it plugged in, you notice mine says updated 5 6 at 8 30 a.m. in the morning. Okay. That was updated a couple days ago. What does it mean by locked and how do you do that? Does it do it automatically? When you, when you, um, I'm trying to figure out a way to easily explain this. When the screen is dark, it is locked. The way to get it to be dark is you press and release the power button quickly. And then when you bring, then when you press the power button again, you have to enter your passcode. The entering of that passcode is unlocking your device. Is that okay, Leah? Yes, sir, thank you. All right, good. All right, everyone. So now I'm gonna go back and talk about airplane mode. Anne has discovered if you're in airplane mode, your Wi-Fi doesn't work. It turns off all the external communication. It turns off the Bluetooth, the cellular, etc. So you can't make a phone call when it's in airplane mode. So the only time most people use that is when they're flying. And I always say the reason they want you to put it in airplane mode is so the plane can take and land, take off and land successfully. And I really like the part about landing successfully. <laughs> um, now, my iPad has been in my briefcase in the uh, overhead compartment when we were taking off and I hadn't put it in airplane mode. So I'm still here. So it did take off and land successfully but they would prefer you turn that off so it's not interfering with the navigation or the controls from the pallet. The next item down there is Wi-Fi. If I click on Wi-Fi, I get a list of things that I can hook into. One of them you'll see on my list there is my iPhone. Bill, do you mean to tell me that I can hook into my phone to get on the internet? Yes, I'm telling you that. If you're taking your, if you have your iPad in the car and you're trying to do some work and you don't have cellular capability on your iPad, which most of us do not, we can hook into an iPhone that's in the car that's traveling with us as a Wi-Fi connection. And then you'll be able to get on the internet basically through your iPhone. 
It's called a personal hotspot. So to, for you, for those of you who have an iPhone in settings there, you'll see personal hotspot, okay? Along with cellular. And we'll talk about that when we get down to that point, okay? But to get on the various networks, you see the little lock and unlock down there? So a direct laser jet, I could click on that and log into my laser jet and get on the internet because my laser jet is on the internet itself. And if you had other neighbors pretty close to you, they would be listed here. And I know when I go out and teach, I get a lot of Wi-Fi connections listed. If you take your iPhone and you walk down the street with settings and tapped on Wi-Fi, you'll see your neighbor's Wi-Fi networks show up and then disappear as you get within maybe a hundred feet of their, their router in their home, their modem router. You'll see them show up down here and hopefully they all have locks on them. If they don't, you can use their Wi-Fi network. And they're also in danger of getting their computer equipment hacked. Hey, Bill? Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. In this area that you're working on now, on my phone, it has Xfinity, all capital letters. It's got a lock sign on it. And then underneath it, it's got Xfinity Wi-Fi with no lock on it. Does that mean that my Comcast is supplying Wi-Fi that I could get on if I wanted to? Is that what that means? I wish I knew, Jim. <laughs> Every once in a while I try that out and I'm not I'm I I'm hesitant to do it because it doesn't have a lock on it. Mm -hmm. And because I don't want to be un insecure, unsecure. Um, but I've seen that at many places. And it's acting like a guest network in your home is what you're thinking and I'm thinking, but I have not tried it, okay? So I can't answer your question. We would have to research that a little bit, okay? I can give you some perspective on that. Good, good. Uh, good. My home does have the same thing. I've got Comcast and so they provide it. And I also, when I was down in Florida or in the condo, they had, the condo had their own network that we could get on, to, or the owner had a network I could get into, but the Comcast had that one. I found it very unreliable when I tried to use it. It, it uh, would drop out frequently and it also was not secure. And I don't know where it would work and where it wouldn't, but uh, it, it is coming from the Comcast, uh, usually the cable, you know, you're, you're in your apartment if you're getting Comcast, but, uh, I found that they didn't work very well and I've tried them both in Massachusetts and Florida with similar problems. Thank you, Bill. That's good. Very good. Can I ask a question about a setting in relationship oh. to Wi-Fi? Yeah. On the, um, on the settings section where you have your Wi-Fi highlighted in the name of it, on the other side where it has a check mark besides your frontier it shows it as locked what does that mean as opposed to not wouldn't it be open no the, no the, the lock means it is protected and i had to put in a passcode to get into it okay when we when we visit when we get visitors from up north you know our children grandchildren whatever they say hi grandpa hi hi dad and then the second thing they say is, what's your Wi-Fi passcode? So that if I, they, they, the frontier would be listed on their device down here, and then it would have a lock. And when you click on it, it wants a password. And that's the password that's written on the bottom of your modem router that you got from Xfinity or from Frontier, unless you changed it. And then you might have a, a, a unique one. 
but there's a unique password on the bottom or side of your your router modem, your router modem that you got from your internet service provider. Question. Go. Question. How do you change it? How do you change it? Well, uh, a technician can do it. You have to basically uh, log into your router and then have a password to get into it and then change it. So usually the technicians or people like Bill Crow can do that. <laughs> Thank you. Bill, un yeah. under Wi-Fi, mine is rocket ship and underneath rocket ship, it says weak security. That's because the password's weak. <laughs> rocket ship would be easy to guess. But you just finished saying you can't, you can't. Uh, Right. I'm saying somebody could be sitting outside your house entering 7 million passwords, right? Eventually they'd, they'd light on rocket ship, I guess. I thought yours is Frontier. Mine is rocket ship. No, no. Oh, the name of your router. Yes, it's under, That's under, the name of the router, not the password name. Yeah, it's the name of the router. Right. And it says weak security. Well, that's because the password to get into it may be not really long. Well, and if I remember that... right, don't say it now, but if I remember right, it's it's not. It's like six or eight digits. And it's on the side of the router, right? Yep, and we wrote it on the side of your router. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But where you live and... and Etc. It would be kind of difficult to hack into it. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. I have a section on there that says "living room speaker" and it's not locked. Is that my living room speaker or somebody else's system? On on, on Wi-Fi. Yes. And it, oh, where on other networks or what's it say? Uh, on the settings, other network, where it just says networks, if you if I scroll down on both the laptop and the phone, it says living room speaker dot zero, I guess it's a zero, <laughs> and then there's no lock, but it has the Wi-Fi symbol. Is it in the same place where mine says direct 61 HP? No, it's Rena? up farther. It says uh, under under other networks. Other yes, that's correct. That device is oh, it's on just the under inter networks. It's just under networks. Oh, well, could it be uh, Amazon Alexa or one of those uh, devices? It could be in this this apartment. Is I it did. a is it, is it a smart speaker? I don't know. <laughs> just says living room speaker. Yeah. Um, now I did have uh, the um, Google one in the other house, but it hasn't been connected here. Well, it's uh, okay. Never mind. It could be a smart speaker. If your speaker is on the internet, it would be listed there perhaps, just like my printer is. Probably what it is. Okay. If your printer is on the internet, should it be listed there? Should it be or is it? Should it be? Because mine it, is it depends on it depends on the speaker and how it's working. You'll notice my have the laser jet printer is on there. But yeah, my, my, my print my Canon printer, which is on the internet, is not listed there. Oh, so it may or may not be listed. That's correct. I have an Amazon Fire, which is listed there. I have an echo. Uh, that one's not listed either. Right. So I'm I, I'm I'm not sure how they pick the ones that they <laughs> they show up. In. There's got to be something. Suffice it to say, only get on to <laughs> the the router there. 
Okay. All right. Bluetooth. So if I click on Bluetooth, I have multiple devices that are hooked into Bluetooth. One is my pencil. My pencil is connected, I, my Apple Pencil. One down there is this mouse that I'm running around the screen with, right? Okay. One is, oh, says it's not connected to the wireless key. Oh, Apple wireless key. Well, it is connected. I think I'm able to type. So that, that one's interesting. <laughs> okay, and my ear, ear pods. Those are my Apple ear pods. Okay. So those are connected. Each one of these, there's no standard technique to get them connected. You have to read the directions on the box kind of thing how you get one of these things connected. Most of us have the capability with our phones to hook into your hands-free operation on your automobile. And you gotta read the owner's manual on the automobile to figure out how to do that, okay? So you'll notice I have a bunch of things capable on the, um, on my iPhone up there, but it's only connected to my Apple Watch right now. So Bill? Oh, yes. Does the wireless mouse and wireless keyboard automatically connect by Bluetooth? No, they have to be set up. <laughs> but if they're working, if they're, they're working and you've had them hooked in, yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my mouse to my iPhone. And hopefully it says now it's connected on my iPhone. See it there? Right there. Right there. Now I'm switching it to the iPad. And now it says it's connected over here. So once you get them working, they work pretty well. And I'm not sure why the keyboard says not connected. <laughs> but on mine, it doesn't list my mouse or keyboard. And I'm work they're working. And it's working. <laughs> yes. It's not listed. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm confabulated by that too. I expected to see the Apple wireless keyboard say connected and it doesn't. Mine doesn't have any devices except the iPhone on the on the iPad and the iPad on the iPhone. And it's going around and around and around. For Bluetooth, Anne? Yes, I'm in the same same spot so, you are. Do you have You've Bluetooth? got all of these my devices and oh, I really yes. have... down down here on the iPhone you'll see. Right. It lists some that I'm not hooked into. All right. Bill, yes. um, what, I, I don't have any of those nice things that you have. I, <laughs> and so what would be the purpose for me to leave Bluetooth on and wouldn't it drain the battery? We're we talking about the iPad or the iPhone? Either one. On the iPad, no, it wouldn't make much sense at all. On the iPhone, if you had Bluetooth in your automobile, you would want to leave it on. If you don't, turn it off on both. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and it's good to do that if you don't have any devices because it's using battery. Because of what Ann pointed out, you can see right here that it keeps searching for stuff, right? And I don't want, and so I'm not, I don't want it to do that. Okay. The only thing that showed up on mine was desktop. Ooh, what that's an the... interesting one. On your <laughs> iPhone or iPad? iPad. That's interesting. So your desktop, I don't... Your desktop huh? computer has Bluetooth capability on it. There's no, there's no reason to do that right now, unless you're doing something special, I guess, like maybe transferring data between the two. No, so just 
I'm just going to turn the Bluetooth off. That's a good idea. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to skip over notifications and sound right now and just go directly to do not disturb. Okay. This is where you would control what, when you want to turn off all disruptions that could come into your devices, like phone calls into your phone or notifications, right? And you go to do not disturb and it gives you some, some capability there. I have do not disturb turned off right now, but I do have it scheduled. You'll notice on my iPad, I say from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., don't, don't bother me, <laughs> okay? And on my iPhone, I say from 9.59 p.m. to 9 a.m., don't bother me. Now, there's some exceptions on your phone, right? Allow calls from, and you can change that. You can say allow phone calls from everyone, just your favorites, all your contacts, or some group of contacts, okay? So if you say all contacts, you won't be able to get phone calls from anybody other than who's in your contacts. So I, I guess I don't recommend that if you're getting a call from your doctor's office and that doctor doesn't happen to be in your contacts. This is not a way to get rid of spam calls. But that is only only when the phone is locked. No. This is... When in do not disturb, allow incoming calls from your contacts. Yeah, if do not disturb mode is on. So if, I'm at, if I turn on my phone at 11 o'clock at night, nobody can call me at 11 o'clock at night. Well, that... Well, wait a minute. It yes, says incoming all calls. Your you're right, you're right, Ann. Well, locked is what I have. So you could have it on always. I'm sorry. So if I change that to this. All right. I think Ann's trying to make the point, and that's a good one, that if you're on your phone, you can get a phone call if it's that setting. Thank you. Okay. Setting the always. If you don't want to get any phone calls, yes, you'd put it on always. No matter what the condition. So it's probably better to have it on while iPhone is locked. <laughs> Isn't that a personal choice? I want to control who I talk to after 11 o'clock, not be interrupted by anybody else. True, but it could be your family that you need that who needs to get a hold of you. Well, then if you have it locked, they're not going to be able to get a hold of you either. They will if you allow, if you allow. I guess all contacts. You could do that. There is one exception there. If you go down that list of um, do not disturb, let me go back to it. Go down that list. And there, there's an exception. <clears throat> See where it says a second call from the same person within three minutes. So if you tell your family, I, I don't like to get phone calls after 10 o'clock at night, but if you must call me, call a second time. And, I, and my phone will then ring.
So you can have off the, uh, the one above it, allow calls from, and have that no one. And you get calls from your family if they right. call three times. If you have that turned on, repeat. I had a friend one time who says, if I'm getting a call at one o'clock in the morning, it's not good news. And there's not much you're gonna do it about it at 11 o'clock or one o'clock in the morning. So why not get a good night's sleep and get the bad news in the morning? That's probably not bad advice. Okay. Bill, where is your list of favorites? So if you chose favorites, where is your list of that? In contacts, each contact has the capability of being made a fair favorite by opening the contact and hitting the heart that's at the bottom of the contact list or the contact information. In my iPad, if I go to my, if I go to, um, Gia here, right? And where do I do that? It's gotta be a way to add to favorites. Huh. Edit. My iPad only has everyone and no one. Um, just a minute. Uh, At the bottom hey, of the contact hey, list. Hey, Bill. A, hey, Bill. I've forgotten. How do you add a... Hey, Bill. If, how do you make a contact a favorite? Bill. Yep. If you go down to the bottom of the contacts, there's a place to add to favorites. I'm in. Okay, I'll go to a contact. And then go to the bottom of it. And there's the bottom of it. You may not have enough information because your other contact had that option. Okay, go to a different contact that has more info. There it is. Yeah. And the favorites. There's a second way to do it. If you go to your phone and the favorites icon, there's also a plus over there that you can add to the favorite. Okay, so if I go to my phone and I go to the stars and I go to the bottom, whoops. Up at the top, you got a plus sign. Ah, there you go. Now I could add anybody in there, I assume. Okay? Yes. Thank you. All right. So it's not a card, it's a star on the, on the uh, phones. And the iPad. All right? Back to settings. Enough on do not disturb. Let's go to screen time. And this is just information, not just, but this is information about how you're using your device. See all activity. And I've got all kinds of things here. Most used settings, <laughs> three hours and three minutes. <laughs> okay. There's my settings use over the last week, right? I taught a class yesterday and I was on settings most of the time on the iPad there. And today I'm building up quite a list, right? You see how that works? My little game of, of four picks, one word shows you how much I spend on it every day. <clears throat> Etc. So it's it's a fun app to play around with to see what you're doing, right? I get a report on my phone uh -huh. at least once a week as to what how much has been used. Okay. <laughs> Is that how much cellular information? No, how much of the time on the phone has been Sweet used time. in various categories? Okay. Ask for it, but it comes. Okay. 
I don't recall getting that. Is there an option here you can get that? I have no um, idea. That was with one of the updates. And then later on, you had an option to turn that off if you wanted to. You see on the bottom, it says turn off screen time. <coughs> I found it annoying to keep getting updates, so I turned it off. <laughs> but I was going to do what I wanted to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. Next, we want to go to general. And again, in screen time, you just play around with it to see what's there. Right, hit the arrows to get something, hit the back arrow to come back, right? Uh, see all activities. And then you can actually get details of each one. There's how I've been using maps. I must have gone on a trip on Monday somewhere. <laughs> get the idea? All right. In general, general is a big one and it contains everything else having to do with your iPad. So if you can't find it in one of these other categories that is listed, it's in general. The first one there is about, okay? And about tells you the name of your device and mine says Bill's iPad Air new. If yours says iPad or iPhone, you probably want to change that so it's, it identifies you. And you do that by tapping the little arrow next to the word name. And the cursor shows up, your keyboard shows up, and then you can backspace and put in whatever text you want there. I don't understand why it's important to change it. Mine says, and Roth iPad 2. That's perfect. I wouldn't change that a bit. One of the reasons you change that is, first of all, it identifies it as yours. Secondly, when you do airdropping, and we'll talk about that in a later class, when you automatically transfer information to somebody else, that somebody else sees your name there and knows it's you and then accepts whatever you're trying to, to do with them, okay? It also says your software version there. I said, mine says 14.5. Did somebody say 15 was out now? No, 14.5.1. Uh, uh, Point one is out. They supposedly fixed the bug in the uh, data uh, tracking permission. Okay. They, the, Kim Commando was saying that you must do that immediately on your, on your, no, so it would be done on both devices. Right. You should be doing it. Now, don't do it now, everybody. I, I updated it. I haven't seen any difference. Okay. But, it may, you know, it may just be that the developers haven't uh, done it yet. <clears throat> so what I'm, what I'm seeing here is I have 14.5 on my iPad and I'm tapping about on my iPhone. And I have the same thing on my iPhone. It tells me the model of my devices. I thought you had automatic updates, Bill. I do. I have... Um, Oh, I guess mobile number happens. and a serial number. <clears throat> Maybe they haven't alerted you yet. I'll get to that in a minute because I'll get to updates. Okay. <laughs> it also tells me the number of songs, videos, and photos I have on my devices. Notice on my iPhone, I have, what, three times the amount of songs that I have on my iPad, <clears throat> et cetera. I have 334 applications on my iPad and 259 on my iPhone, the memory capability, et cetera. Okay, and how much space I have left. Oftentimes your Apple store, when you, if you wanna call for help, they'll wanna know your serial number. 
and perhaps your model number as well, but at least your serial number, okay? The other thing there is software update. Now I'm gonna tap it and you can tap it as well. I go back to the settings and I'm looking at the general menu under settings. It's software update. And I have my automatic turned on and it says 14.5.1. Now, Ann gave us some good advice there. She said you should, Kim Commando said update. You should update everything you can whenever you can. Do not hesitate to do updates, okay? And this one looks like a security update of some kind. And when you get off the call, you could go here and go download and install on your devices. Or it should try to update tonight or tomorrow night or the night after that. They can't update all 7, 75 million or billion um, iPhones and iPads that are out there at the same time. And so it may not get done tonight or last night or tomorrow night, but it will get done if you have automatic updates turned on. And as I just mentioned, you can, when you get off the phone, don't do it now, but you can do a download and install manually right here. So I'm hitting the back arrow and going back to settings again. And I'm in the settings, general menu. Just as a word of uh, knowledge, if I tap general over here, I get the general menu and it says general at the top. If I hit control center, it says control center at the top. Okay. Airdrop. I recommend you have that turned on for at least contacts, if not everyone. There's not much danger in having AirDrop turned on for everyone. They can't put things on your device with AirDrop um, without you agreeing to it. In other words, if AirDrop is turned on and some of you are sitting back there saying, for goodness sakes, Bill, what's AirDrop? <laughs> AirDrop allows you to send let me give you a hypothetical example. You're on a, uh, a cruise and the people you've gained friendship with uh, are, went on an excursion. They went to see the dog sleds and you went to do a whale watch. So I assume it's an Alaskan cruise, okay? And you're having drinks before dinner and uh, they say, boy, was that great? We were in dog sleds and it was, snowing and icy and it was wonderful and you're you're bragging about all the whales you saw uh, jumping out of the water and everybody says well do you, can you share those pictures with me well if you have airdrop turned on for everyone then they can do the following and i'm going to show you on the ipad I think I am, if I can remember how to get AirDrop started. <clears throat> oh, what you do is I'll go to those pictures that I took. I'm gonna select a couple. And then I wanna share them. Just a minute. I select some pictures. And I tap the little share box down here. And one of the options in, in sharing is airdrop. See the airdrop right there? If I tap airdrop, now it would come up and list the different places I could airdrop it to. And one of them says my iPhone, Bill's iPhone. I think if I tap that, <laughs> it will send it to my iPhone and there the pictures are there. If it hadn't been mine, it would have come up and said, do you want to allow or accept pictures from Bill's iPad? 
and you would have to accept them. So I just got those pictures sent to me from my iPhone. So you would be getting pictures of the whale watch from the people who did the whale watch and you would be getting pictures of the dog sledders from the people who did the dog sledding. It's an, I think Apple came up with this when they were at the business meeting because you can also share your contact information in the same way. If I bring up my contacts and I go down to my name in contacts, and I'm, I just met someone and I said, can we share information? And so I'd go to my name and contacts. Okay. And we go down here at the bottom of the contacts list where it says share contact. And I would tap airdrop. Okay. And their phone or their iPad name would show up on this list of devices. I would tap it and I would, I would be able to send it. Not the one where the person. No, can you edit that list? No, the only way, it's only the people that your, your device has found that's within 60 feet of you. Thank you for mentioning that, Peter. Those people that are in that list that just came up, mine was Bill's iPhone. I do this in classes and all the people in class, their iPhones and iPads are listed in that list that said devices. And they have to have their Bluetooth on and their Wi-Fi on in order for it to work. Okay, so this is one case where you would say, okay, everybody, you have to turn on your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi. You don't have to be connected to anything. In either of those cases, you just have to have them on. And then your, you, your device would automatically find those particular devices that allowing you to, um, that, are, that have allowed you to send them pictures. Did that make sense, Peter? Yes. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of obvious. Uh, the, the devices out looking for other people will have the same device. Right. They're they're looking. Your device goes looking for folks, right? That has AirDrop turned on, and when it's turned on and capable of getting information from you i.e. it's set for everyone because you're not in their contacts, okay? It's a shame when you share a contact, you can't edit the information you're sharing. Oh, well, I've created two contacts, one that I share and one that I just keep for myself. Did you see that? There's, there, I have three of them there actually. There's the one I share with everybody, right? It has very limited, right? It has my name. Uh, phone number, email address, and address. And the reason I give them my date of birth is it shows up on their calendar and I get all kinds of great gifts on their count on my birthday. <laughs> You're very, very old, Bill. <laughs> yeah, it looks good for his age. <laughs> Have you been to Mineral Springs? <laughs> <laughs> All right, tap, if I tap the one I use for everything else, the other Bill Crow, the one that has me, that Siri knows of me, I have a whole bunch of things in there. I have all my friends listed, et cetera, okay? So I have two contacts that I share, that I share one and not the other. What about the third one? Third what? Contact. Oh, I, that was, I was showing people how to put in a contact in my class. So I put myself in there again. That has his real age in it. Say again? That one has your real age on it. The, the, which one? <laughs> oh, my personal one? Yeah, that one has my real age. 
<laughs> where are we in general? We did airdrop there, right? There's where you set up airdrop and say where you want to get airdrop from. Okay. Mm, should I tell that one? <laughs> the only reason you might want to not have airdrop turned on for everyone is that if you're within 60 feet of Anthony Weiner. <laughs> okay. If you don't know what I was talking about, that's okay. <laughs> Picture in picture, if you have that turned on, I, I skipped over airplay and handoff, right? How come you skipped over that? Well, go ahead and you can go to it. I have automatically airplay to TVs. I have that turned on. And Where therefore, I can no, have my. Say oh, again. Hand off. oh, yeah. Okay. And handoff allows you to start something on one device and end up finishing on another one. If you start a video and then want to show it on the other one. You have to have Bluetooth on. For AirPlay, I don't know. I always have it on, so I'm not sure. You do. You do? Okay. Yeah. And I don't usually have it on, so it's such a hassle. Uh, I, I demonstrated this in a class. If you have a smart TV and you, you, one of the options on a smart TV is Apple TV. If you bring up Apple TV, you can display whatever's on your device, phone or iPad, onto the TV. And you do that by going to the control center. And I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to go to the control center by putting my finger in the top right corner of my iPad and pulling down. And right now I'm sharing my screen with my computer. It says Bill's HP Elite One. Okay. And that's who I'm sharing it with. Yours just says share screen or something like that. What's screen, yours? Screen. screen monitoring. Screen, screen monitor. All right, mirroring, screen. Mirroring, screen mirroring, right. If you tap screen mirroring and you're close to your television within Bluetooth distance, it will list your, and you have smart TV, you have Apple turned on there. It will say Apple TV. You tap it and it automatically goes to your TV. So oftentimes I will purchase a movie on my iPad or my iPhone, and I will display it on the television. Or I create a slideshow for a particular event I went to to show friends that are visiting. And it will display it onto the television. All right. Picture in picture allows you to have a video running on your device and have it be in the upper right hand corner or left hand corner. You can move it around and you can go do something else while you're watching a, let's say you're doing a Zoom meeting and you're just a observer of it. You can have it show up and they want in a small icon or a thumbnail size icon on your screen. Here's the, one of the more important ones there. It's called iPad storage or iPhone storage. Okay. And it shows you how much of your device's capacity to have things on it, to house stuff, right? How much of it you're used and how much of it you have available. In their infinite wisdom, Apple said, gee, that first option there, offload unused apps. 
offload unused apps, you can enable that and it will automatically offload apps that you haven't used in a while. Now, some, somebody asked me in the class, what's a while? And I don't know, <laughs> right? But I can save a lot of data. You know, you saw that I have over 300 apps. So I could save a lot of space by offloading the ones I haven't used in a while. The concern here is that you've, you'll lose the apps. No, they're just in the Apple Store. You can go back to the Apple Store, check the, the applications you've purchased, and download that app again at no charge, even though you may have paid for it in the past. And where that is, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the App Store and show you where that is. I've gone to my uh, home screen and I tap the, the double A, the, um, the, the letter A that's made out of pop popsicle sticks. I click on that. Well, it's, it's a common, isn't it? And then I click. Yes. Well, it's, it's a then I click <laughs> up the right hand corner of that screen is your personal yeah. stuff. Yeah. Somebody's not muted. Right. Hold on. Never mind. And then it says purchased there. You know where it says purchased? And now it's listing, and there's my purchases. And now it's listing all the apps that I have purchased. The ones that say open are on my device. The ones that have a cloud on them, I have had a, my, on my device at some time in the past. And now I'm choosing to download them to my device again, or I can choose, okay? Oh, didn't want to do that. Spam risk, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I went into media and purchased. Hold on, hold on, my phone's going off here. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's nice that your uh, phone carrier told you that. <laughs> yeah. I went into uh, uh, purchase media and purchases. Is that what you're in? Yeah, these are all purchases. Is where I am. Yeah, well, is that medium purchases? You went into your uh, your Apple ID. Okay, went into hold on. I, I went to the Apple Store. Oh, you went to the Apple Store. Right. Well, hold on a second. The App Store, APP. App Store, yeah. Okay. And then I hit my IDs here. Right. Okay. And then I then I tap purchases purchased. Yeah. And my wife and I share apps, so she's listed there, but there's mine. Right. And these are listed in chronological order of date of purchase. Oh, most recent on top. Oops, so I can go down through here and say, gee, I have purchased something, whoa. <laughs> right, I purchased something. April 2012, right? And I could download it again. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to really delete it, if it's no no longer necessary. Well, you, you can't you can't tell Apple, <laughs> I don't want to know I bought that one. What I'm just what I'm looking at is all the apps that Apple has in my uh, catalog. It's in my personal catalog in the, in the app store. In other words, they have a little file in the cloud that says Bill Crow at wtcrow at verizon.net has 
at some point in time in the past downloaded these apps. Can I get rid of one of them? I can hide it. Okay. If I move, if I move it to the left, I can hide it, but I guess I can't tell you I didn't purchase it. And if I hide it, I wonder how I unhide it. <laughs> now you can click up here where it says not on your device, not mm -hmm. on my iPad, for example. Now it's only showing me the apps that I've purchased in the past that I don't have on my device right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite a long list. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you hide them, how do you get them visible again, Bill? That's what I was going to ask Bill or somebody to figure out. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to hide it. What the heck? Now, how do I? Bleh. How do I find it again? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All purchases. Back to my account. If I tap done there, and then I go back here. <laughs> That's the one we're going to have to look up. <laughs> there's purchased, and there's purchased, but where do you get the unhid? Where do I find the unhidden one? They're the hidden ones. <laughs> Got to be somewhere in here. That's a good one to, for us to research a little bit. It's nice about this. It tells you when you need an update because some of these apps don't alert you when you need an update. Yeah, they, sh they should, though, shouldn't they? You'd think. But yeah, yeah. They don't. A lot of them don't. If you don't use them often, they, they don't. Right. Was there a couple there? Yeah, Google was down there listed as one I needed an update for. Okay. Now here, Google Digital wants an, it says I need an update. Yeah. I use that almost every day. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, Google Sheets, I need an update. All right. Let me go back to, we've gone to the Apple store. We've seen our purchases, et cetera, there. Oh, good one. Assume you're trying to, I'm back in settings and I'm back at general and I'm, I'm looking at background app refresh. Okay. If I start an app, uh, let's say like mail, and then I press the home button. Mail is still in the background working. And if I have background app refresh turned on for it, frequently it will go to the cloud and see if I have new email. Thus using battery. Right? allow apps to refresh their content when the Wi-Fi on Wi-Fi in the background turns off apps, turning off apps may help you preserve battery. So if I'm looking at AccuWeather and I leave it running and I have app refresh turned on for it, so if I have background refresh turned on, which I just turned it on, and I'll turn it on for AccuWeather, it will update itself as the weather changes during the day. And consequently using battery. So I choose not to do background e app refresh. And when I open the app again, it will take a second or so for it to go get the current weather condition versus looking at what the temperature was at seven this morning and it's now noon. 
I'll get when I first open it, it would say seven in the morning and then update itself. Does that make sense to everyone? AccuWeather is a good example of that. I choose not to do background app refresh. Date and time, right? You can have a 24 hour clock, show AM and PM in the status bar. You'll notice that my status bar says 11.53 AM, right? Show date in the status bar, also shows the date up there, right? I have set automatically turned on and I give it my, the current time zone therefore is set because it knows where I, my iPad is, it says I have New York time, okay? As you fly across the country with your device, it would then automatically update. All right. Keyboards is an interesting one. Um, I have multiple keyboards there, it says three of them. I have a Korean keyboard. You can add a new keyboard. So if you were from a different country and you want a German keyboard, and there's three different German keyboards, right? They would automatically put in the, the correct types of A's, et cetera, okay? Autocorrect, I have turned on, so it makes, corrects a lot of my misspellings. I want it to check for spelling. I want the predictive, you know, the little, um, let me just show you that. You see, I typed an R and it, the predictive, it says, do you want to type really or right? That's the predictive keyboard. So if I wanted to type the word right, and then it says a word that might logically follow right is now, after, or at. So I said right now, <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> end the class. <laughs> All right. So we're getting close to the end of class time. And, and I type that whole note by just typing a couple letters. Make sense to everybody? That's predictive keyboard. Where did you find that one? <laughs> Where did I find predictive? I mean, yes. I'm in settings, general keyboards, and predictive. Smart punctuation, if you hit the space bar after you've ended, ended a sentence and you double, double tap the space bar, it should put a period. I have not seen it put a question mark being a smart punctuation. So if you have a keyboard that splits on you, that's what that's all about. Keyboard flicks. I'm not sure what keyboard flicks is. Anybody know what the keyboard flicks is? I think I know, but I'm not going to guess. Okay. That be like going up to one over a letter. I, I that's what I that's what I would think it is, Anne. But I'm not sure. If I turn that off. Yes, you're right. See, it doesn't, those, those numbers doesn't appear above the number, above the letters that we had before. Good guess. Under keyboards, I don't have any of that other stuff. 
on the on the phone you might not if you're on the phone no i'm on my ipad you have an external keyboard on that ipad no okay and you don't have any of these things here all keyboards no what do you have on all keyboards english emoji fonts fonts keyboard um and as i say a new keyboard but when i go in there it's only got the we'll go different. Back, go back one level. Does it say keyboards at the top, Sharon? So I went to, I'm in general and I went to keyboards. Yes, I went one step further and didn't see it. Okay, thank you. Good one. Enable di dictation puts the microphone on your keyboard and therefore you can dictate and you can bear bell. You can di dictate in, in Russian or uh, German if you wish, <laughs> okay? Turn your key flicks back on. Hey, Bill, what was, what was that key flicks thing? Oh, on the iPads, on the iPads, right now Keyflix is turned off. You see that? There's no numbers above the letters. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Did I turn it? I didn't. Oh, keyboards. Yeah. And then I turned Keyflix. Whoops. I turned. I turn flicks on, and now if I go to my notes, see the not the grayed out numbers that are above the letters. Thank you. And if I pull down, I get the numbers. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, I use that all the time now for for the apostrophe. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. It, it just saves going to that other keyboard. Uh, trackpad and mouse. If you have a trackpad and I have a mouse here, here's where you would go to set that up. Okay. And the features you would set up with it. Right. And if you get a mouse, if it's a Bluetooth mouse, it will work with this, with your iPad. I don't have any other fonts installed on my device. You can change language and dictionaries. VPN, virtual private network. I don't have one connected to my device, okay? The last thing, you know, if you want to read the legal stuff here, here we go, right? <laughs> legal notices, et cetera. The one you don't want to go to and the last one is reset. You do not want to reset unless you're getting a new device. And then you're going to reset it, and then you're going to give the, the device to refurb, and they will get it to someone who can use it. But if you're going to get rid of your device, in any case, you would go here and reset, and you erase all content and settings. I happen to get one that came to the shop right now, and that device had not been reset, and they didn't have a passcode on it. So I, right now, I have access to all that person's information, all their passwords, <laughs> all their um, friends and contacts. So be sure you do a reset of your device before you get rid of it. Okay. Bill, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, I, on my phone, 
I pushed enable when I was in offload unused apps and I then it put it changed it, but I can't get it to undo it again. You go to settings. You scroll down to app store. And right there, it says offload unused apps, change it right there. So settings, app store, offload unused apps. You turn that off there. You can tell I've had that problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> app store. Okay. Automatic. Now, which one did you say off offload unused apps in there? Okay. Turn it off. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know. I know. That was hidden. <laughs> Why do you have apps uh, um, disabled on the top? Automatic download apps. I don't want it to do it because it takes battery life. Okay. Automatic download new purchased, including fee free made on your device. App updates. I do allow up. What's that one? What's the first one there? That one's for getting them if you had other devices. Okay. Thank you. An old religious woman, an older religious woman, goes to the pet store and buys a parrot. Everything is fine and so she brings the parrot home. It begins to swear uncontrollably. Blank, blank this, blank, blank that, blank, blank you. And finally, the lady can't stand it anymore. She grabs the bird, shoves it into the freezer and slams the door shut. Squawking, squeaking, pounding, crashing, you hear from the freezer. For a few minutes, and then everything goes quiet. The woman is scared that she has hurt the poor bird and opens the freezer door. The parrot walks out calmly, steps gently onto the woman's outstretched hand, he looks into the lady's eyes and says, ma'am, I am truly sorry if, I have, if my language has offended you and I will do it no more. And do you mind if I ask, what happened to the chicken? What did it do? That's funny. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't quit off? your day job. <laughs> <Don't> qu <laughs> Just a minute, I got to stop sharing here. Uh, all right. All Bill, right. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Please. You keep talking about this class you had. Are you having live classes? Uh, the school is offering live classes, but nobody uh, signed up for them. I do do um, I do do classes at some of the retirement homes, and they are live, and the people are not masking up. I mean, it's 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 a mess. Um, so yes, I'm doing some live classes at some of the retirement facilities. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? No. Where was that offload apps again? Offload unused apps? Yes, where is that located? Uh, <laughs> settings? Okay. Uh, app Store. Was it App Store? Yeah. App Store. Yeah. App, app Store got it back again. Oh, does it have it back? Yeah, there it is. Offload unused apps. It's also in Settings, General, wait, iPad, wait, wait, wait. iPad or iPhone Storage. Storage, yeah. Wait a minute, Bill, say it again, please. Settings? Yes. General? Yes. <laughs> Settings, general, iPad storage or iPhone storage? Wait a minute. I don't have that. iPhone storage. Okay. iPhone storage, yes. And then it should oh. say offload yes. unused apps? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's easy to get to. Yeah, that one. 
But don't forget, if you want to turn it off, you have to go to the App Store app or the App Store uh, controls in setting. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute, what'd you say? I don't understand that. Once you turn it on, you can't turn it off here. Okay. You have, I do you have to go to settings, app store, and turn off offload unused apps. Wait a minute. Okay, I go to the app store and click my name. No, no, no. I'm sorry, go to settings, app store. Wait, 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 wait. Wait just a minute, please. Mm -hmm. So go to settings. App store. Wait a minute. Settings, app store. Does it say settings, iTunes and app store? No. Oh, app you have an older device. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know it, where it is on that one. Oh, I see. Okay. okay, I found it. And it says off. It would it, if if it's there, Bear Bell, Bear Bell. Yes. If it's there, it would be an App Store. It would be in that one, right? Okay, I'll look. Okay. Did Thank you see you. it there, uh, Jim? Yeah, I found it. Thank you. Okay. Have a great week, folks. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Bill. Bill. Bye bye now. From Minneapolis area. Thanks. <laughs> Take Thanks. care. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye now. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>